Hello everyone, I am here once again to bring you an episode of Pastor Quest. Um, uh, last time I got emotionally invested with Car Cat. <laughs> And I had, and I almost cried, so I had to cut the video. But um, we are going to um continue now. So yeah. Okay, we're going to load back here. Clearly something is happening here, and it's probably a really deep and affecting moment, but you're just not sure what you're supposed to do. You you bleed, he bleeds, both of you bleed, sweet, blood friends. You can fuck with that. How did you get a Cerulean's hoodie? Did you bag yourself a high blood morale? Now that you have established that the two of you do indeed both have blood, Karkat appears to have warmed up to you a lot. He even offers you something called grub juice, which you're pretty sure is just coke, except not as sweet. It's almost a little salty. You take a tiny polite sip and then pour um, it onto the dead plant as soon as Karkat turns his back. You tell him you aren't actually sure where you got um, this sweatshirt. You were just wearing it when you woke up? You don't even remember where that was. <laughs> you just know you were standing in front of John's house, and you're wearing this hoodie, and you knew it was important, but not why it's important. Possibly because it keeps you from being naked. You don't realize it belongs to a cerulean, whatever that is. Croquette is looking at you like you aren't making much sense, which is fail. unfair. Because you don't real you aren't really making much sense. So you're a mutant blood alien with amnesia that can also teleport. Yep. Oh, you can time travel too. Don't push it. Karkat sits down at his desk and hits the space bar on his keyboard. We could probably figure out whose cast sign that is. Well, not us specifically, unless you've got some incredibly unlikely and well-honed husk top skills. You've got no husk top skills, honed or other eyes. Yeah, I'm not fucking surprised. Here, just give me a second. Don't break any of my shit. You take a glance across the room, keeping your arms behind your back as not um make absolutely sure you don't break any of the shit. Um, his room is surprisingly tidy for someone as scattered as Carcat. Mostly just weapons and movie posters. It all has the air of someone who doesn't plan to live in a place for very long. It feels temporary. Karkat is typing furiously with his mouth pulled into a little frown. That's his default, it appears. Every so often, though, he throws glances at the cuts on your arm. He really has hung up on your blood. Good news, Captor! Tonight is your lucky night! Finally, you get a chance to put your money where your dribbling, snaggled tooth flap is. I need you to do something for me. KK, if fifth, I'm more whining about the team leaders. I, I don't want to hear it. You just don't have the qualities necessary for this sort of scenario. And if you're just here to start some sort of slap fight with regulars, you should probably go fuck yourself. Because I've got actual work I need to do tonight. <laughs> oh my god, who gives a fuck about a game of righty I dug out of a hole in the ground? And what actual work? Like, I don't believe that for a second. You mean you actually work of touching yourself while sobbing into your recuper coon? Yes, hilarious, but we can skip for foreplay just in time for our lives. All that's going to happen is you saying something you regret, and then the uh, crypt typing whether or not there are still threats. Okay, first of all, fuck you. I don't have time for your pathetic burns burning me into a carton of weak sauce. There's actual real serious shit going down. Well, now we've waited for like two minutes telling each other how busy we are. What the fuck do you want? I need you to check something in the Imperial database for me. Cast records, and what you do without asking me why I need it. Deal? Hey, what the fuck, KK? 
If only no deal, you didn't even try to make a deal, you just told me to do something incredibly illegal and dangerous. Why don't you just cast records so you think our ancestors are bullshit? Ancestors are bullshit. Fake night dream nonsense for kids who hate themselves and want to experience a connection as something better than they are. Face the facts, bulge weeds. There's no way any of us are descended from anybody that matters. And why the hell do you want me to risk getting cold for records if it's a bunch of bullshit that doesn't matter? I might have a dust list, but I'm not suicidal. So either tell me what crawled into your nook and laid eggs in there, or let me back out to work. Okay, fine. I'm only telling you this because we're friends and I trust you. There's this person in my hive. Person? Yeah, they aren't a troll, but they aren't a drone either. I figure they're an alien, but they've got a cerulean sign and we're trying to figure out where it came from. Wait, they aren't a thrull, but they're a cerulean. Sorry, KK. I'm trying to wrap my pan around this, but I'm pretty sorry you're fucking with me. Oh my god, could you just run this? Give me a second. Okay, nobody has the sign or scent name in a while. Um, ask your new alien friend if they know the name Adelov. Hey, do you know- Oh, what the fuck? Sit back from where you've been reading over Karkat's shoulder. He couldn't resist. It was just getting so heated and mad, banging on the keyboard and making weird little growly noises. You think he could just- Karkat goes absolutely silent. He's rigid. If he'd been a cat, his hair would have been standing straight up. You ask him what's wrong, and he shushes you so loud he, you almost fall over from his shock. You strain. In the distance, you think he restrains statically swirling. Suddenly, Karkata explodes in emotion, grabbing your arm and pulling you into this respite block and down the stairs. In the living room, he tugs a thick um, uh, black blanket from off the back of the couch and pulls up the rug in the center of the room. Beneath it is a trap door. What the hell is- Be quiet! His movements are quick and panicky, but also methodical. His jaw is set and his eyes are hard as he unbolts the trapdoor and gives it a hard Yankee to loosen it and props it open. Beneath it is a rectangular pit in the fountains foundations of his house, the size and shape of a yellow grave. This isn't the first time he's done this. He thought it's even the tenth. So far, Karka has struck you as a little bit ridiculous, but now there's something fierce burning in him, something angry and distilled. The sound comes again, closer this time, and you see a hulking shadow out the window, huge, menacing, and armored. <gasps> a frick. Okay, I need to freaking catch up. Karkai Yang summons you down into the pit with him and wraps the two of you in a blanket. Then he closes the trap door and you're plunged into the darkness almost so absolute, it's like you've stopped existing. What the hell's going on? A drone. Karkat's face is squished against your shoulder. The fear in his voice shudders you to your bones. It's just a routine check. You should be fine down here. My, Lu my Lucis dug this. It hides the temperature. The temperature? Of me. Of us. Of our mutation. You don't understand, but that doesn't stop you from being afraid. And possibly heavy footsteps land on that floor above you. Karkat trembles. God, you have to do something. Okay. Um, we're about to get absolutely murdered. <laughs> I don't like Karkat being scared. I just want to hold him. Okay, well, I'm gonna... Put this here. So yeah, um, see you next time.